Sparky. Ah, Mr. Savage, you saw through my clever disguise. When did you get this store? I just took it over a couple of weeks ago. Don't you want to shake my hand? Uh, sure. Ah! Gotcha. Oh, oh, it's a joke. Yeah, and a very funny one, I might add. Yeah, yeah, I, I bet you have to add that a lot. Well. Sparky, I'm looking for a gift for someone special. Ah, uh, your girlfriend. No, not my girlfriend. My judge friend. Hey, I have got the perfect gift right here. Ooh, nice pen. Oh, no, it leaks. Yeah, it's supposed to. It's a trick pen. Oh, really? Hey, is this disappearing ink? Of course. Yeah, I have to wash the shirt about ten times, but it'll disappear eventually. What? <laughs> hey, lighten up. I'm kidding. Oh. Now here is the perfect gift. Binoculars. Binoculars? Not bad. <laughs> Hi, can I help you? Uh, yeah, I need a gift for my boss, and I'm in a hurry. Well, let me introduce myself. I am Sparky Not Quite, owner of the Sparky Not Quite dollar store where we specialize in gifts and gags. What is that? One of those hand buzzer things? <laughs> I forgot it was there. I'm sorry. Cute. Well, how about one of those giant refrigerator magnets? Very unique, and they cover your whole refrigerator, so you only need one magnet. Too stupid. Wow, I'll take three. Wait a minute, I have got the perfect gift right here. A wind chime. Too stupid. Wait, you know that's not half bad. You know, a nice wind chime might finally get me that promotion. What? Oh, nothing. All right, I'll take one. Well, let me get one from the back. Nice day, isn't it? I heard it was going to rain. Yeah, that's what I mean. Nice day for rain. But then it's going to clear up. That's what I mean. Nice day to be nice, then rain, then clear up and be nice again. Are you all right? <laughs> Actually, I'm a lawyer. Doug Savage, science court attorney. Penny Nichols, corporate executive. Really? Well, assistant executive. Assistant to the assistant junior executive. Well, anyway, I have a cell phone. Cool. You must be really important. Important isn't the word. Well, here you go. Can you bring it out to my car? Oh, yeah, sure. By the way, we have a policy that all sales are final. Okay, fine. Just put it in my car. I'm in a hurry. Here, Ms. Nash. Happy birthday. A writing crop. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you, Jim. Call me Patty. Here, Patty. Excuse me? I, I mean, Ms. Nash. Oh, thank you, Penny. It's not another wool sweater, is it? No, no. You know, I really didn't know you were allergic to wool. Allergic isn't the word. If I were a sheep, I'd have to shave myself. <laughs> oh, Marty! <laughs> well, Penny, thank you. Just what I always wanted, a thing. What is it, a joke? No. If it is a joke, it's very funny. So, sort of. No, no, it's not a joke. They were supposed to be wind chimes. Okay, then, but where are those reports that were supposed to be on my desk yesterday? Huh? Did you think I forgot? No. Did you think this gift would help me forget? Yes. No, I mean, no. No. <laughs> if you really want to be considered for this promotion, Penny, I have to see some improvement. You will, Patty. Uh, Patricia, I'm, I'm Ms. Nash. But the ink's not coming out, Sparky. I thought it was disappearing ink. It is. Calm down. Give it time. It'll be gone in 48 hours. <laughs> this is a piece of junk. You sold me one of your childish tricks. No, I didn't. I sold you some wind chimes. Well, look at them. Do they look like wind chimes to you? Wait a minute. They were... But they were all stuck together before. They didn't look like wind chimes, and they didn't act like wind chimes. Well, they look fine to me. Look, Miss, uh... Nichols. Penny Nichols. Why don't I get you another box of wind chimes? Wait right here. Here you go. These better work, or I want my money back. But I told you I can't give you your money back. That's the whole deal here. No money back. Well, then maybe I'll ask for something other than money. Like your whole store. Hello, Doug Savage, Science Court Attorney speaking. How can I help you? Mr. Savage, this is Penny Nichols. We met at Sparky Not Quite the store yesterday. Oh, right. You bought the wind chimes. Yeah, and I gave them to my boss. And when she took them out of the box, they were all stuck together. Yeah, I remember. Well, it happened again. Twice. I looked ridiculous. I didn't get my promotion, and it was all because of those lousy wind chimes. Wow, how humiliating for you. Well, thanks for calling. Wait, I want to bring Sparky Not Quite to Science Court and prove that all he sold me was a bunch of trick wind chimes. 
You did say you're a science court attorney, right? Oh, the best. Really? Well... Hey, Miss Crimple, did you smell my flower? I didn't. Well, here, take a whiff. <laughs> anyway, Sparky, you're sure those weren't some sort of trick wind chimes that you sold to Penny Nichols by mistake? To be honest with you, Miss Crimple, I didn't even know the wind chimes were in the back room until just a few days ago. So you don't know how long they've been sitting in storage? Right. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff already in the stock room when I took over the business from my brother Marky. Well, apparently Penny has a whole bunch of witnesses from her office who said the wind chimes were stuck together. But that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Tim, get the camera and take some pictures of Sparky's storage area. Why? What for? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Sparky? Yeah? Do you like the smell of this flower? Uh... Whoa! Hey, cut that out. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Good morning, stenographer Fred. Oh, hi, Judge Stone. What do you have there, my little courthouse companion? Some jokes. Oh, can I see? Sure. Do you want a piece of gum? No, thanks. No, you have to. Let's part it a joke. Oh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, what is it supposed to do? It's going to turn your whole mouth blue. Great. Is my mouth blue yet? Yeah, it's all blue. Is mine? Ah... Uh... Yeah. Hey, that was a knee slapper. Any more jokes, Fred? Uh, no. I guess that's it. Now what? I guess we're done. I'll see you inside. Okay. Sparky, you sell a lot of joke stuff, right? Yes, I do. Yes. But you say that Penny Nichols wind chimes that stuck together and didn't chime were not a joke, right? That's right. They were not a joke. Well, how do you explain what happened to my client twice with two different wind chimes? I don't know. You don't know. Well, maybe this will help you know. <laughs> These aren't wind chimes. They're just a bunch of stuck-together pieces of metal. Your Honor, I submit these as Exhibit A. Fine. Stenographer Fred, could you please hold on to these? Okay. I call Dr. Felix Fullergas to the stand. Dr. Fullergast, could you please have a look at these so-called wind chimes? Sure. Are they stuck together with glue? No. Tape? No. Then what? They appear to be magnetized. That's right, magnetized. These aren't wind chimes, they're just a bunch of magnets. Maggots? Magnets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Fullergast. Your Honor, I rest my case. Good for you. I like your optimism. Miss Crumple? Dr. Fullergast, what are the bars of the wind chimes made of? Iron. They're made of iron. Can you tell us what makes iron different from other metals? Well, for one thing, iron has the ability to become magnetized. Could you explain? Sure. In a piece of iron, like in any metal, the atoms face in different sort of random directions. You mean like this way and that? Yes, so to speak. Objection! I'm bored! <laughs> Hang in there, Mr. Savage. Continue, Dr. Fullergast. Well, if the atoms in iron can be organized somehow to face mostly in the same direction, that iron becomes magnetized. It would send out an invisible field of magnetism, a magnetic field, all around it. Then what would happen? Well, then we would call one end of the iron south. Why south? Because that's what they call one end of the magnet. What do they call the other end? North. Makes sense. Doctor, will the south end of a magnet move toward the north end of another magnet? Yes, but the north end of one magnet will try to swing away from the north end of another magnet. Thank you, Dr. Fullergast, that's all. Your Honor, I've certainly been known to miss a thing or two in my day. But didn't Miss Crimple just win my case for me? You have to listen a little closer, Mr. Savage. Why? What did he say? He said that the wind chimes appear to have become magnetized. What? The iron bars of the wind chimes may have accidentally become magnets. Ooh. Oh, accidentally. You mean like, oops, I'm a magnet, and oops, now I'm not a magnet, and oops, I'm a magnet again. I have to agree with Doug. It is confusing. While we try to figure it out, let's review the case. Penny Nichols bought a set of wind chimes from Sparky Not Quite, but when her boss took them out of the box, they acted more like magnets than wind chimes. When she brought them back to Sparky for a refund, the wind chimes had returned to normal. 
What's going on? Is it possible for the wind chimes to act like magnets one minute and act normally the next? Let's go to the science court lab so we can investigate this mystery together. You've already learned quite a bit about magnets. Are you ready to learn more? Dr. Fullagast is still on the witness stand, and he's about to explain how magnets work. Let's get back to the courtroom to hear what he has to say. Look, this nail is not a magnet. No kidding, it's a nail. Right, it won't pick up these metal paper clips, see? Right, it's a nail. But if I run the nail over this really strong magnet several times, the atoms inside the nail will begin to sort of line up in one direction. And what does that mean? Well, it means the nail can become a magnet, see? I think that's what happened to the wind chimes. Somehow they became magnetized. But they didn't rub against anything. Your Honor, I call my assistant Tim to the stand. Tim, where did you take this picture? In the bag storage area of Sparky Not Quite Store. And what does this picture show? It shows boxes of wind chimes stacked on top of huge boxes of refrigerator magnets. Thank you, Tim. That's all. You see, by sitting on top of the big magnets and being dragged across them, the wind chimes became magnets. Wait a minute. If the chimes became magnets, how come they weren't acting like magnets when Penny brought them back to Sparky's store? You'll see. I call Professor Parsons to the stand. Professor Parsons, can you explain why the wind chimes went from being iron bars to magnets and then back to iron bars? Uh, what? Can you explain why the wind chimes went... <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I heard you. Now let's use the nail that Dr. Fullagas magnetized for us, shall we? Okay, just as the atoms in a bar of iron can be organized, lined up in one direction, they can also be disorganized. Sonographer Fred, would you kindly smash the nail with a hammer, please? I don't think I could smash it kindly. Right, well then, just smash it hard. Okay. hi ya ya All right, Fred, now that should do it. No more smashing? Now that its atoms have become disorganized, the nail is no longer a magnet. See, it uh, won't pick up any paper clips. Hey, wait a minute. When Penny brought the chimes back, she smashed them onto the floor. And that's why they weren't stuck together. Would that have done it, Professor Parsons? Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. That smashing could have been enough to demagnetize the iron bars in the chimes. Yeah, but... But, but... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Sparky not quite loves to make jokes. Look at this pen I bought from him. It leaks ink all over me. And you. Sorry about that. Anyway, I for one did not follow anything about this. Things not being magnets, then becoming magnets, then going back to not being magnets. And I'm hoping you didn't follow it either. Thank you. Miss Crumple? Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, sure Sparky not quite enjoys a good joke. That's part of his job. But he also knows when to draw the line. Isn't that right, Sparky? Oh, right, right, yes. Sparky didn't sell Penny Nichols any trick wind chimes. Unbeknownst to Sparky, the chimes became magnetized by constantly being rubbed against some big magnets. That rubbing lined up the atoms in the iron chimes and turned them into magnets. And when Penny threw them to the floor, the atoms became disorganized and the chimes became demagnetized again. The atoms inside of a metallic bar can be pointing all this way and that. But something kind of strange can occur sometimes if the metal's made of iron and it's got to be iron. When the atoms start to get in line, they can make a piece of iron start to act in the strangest ways. Strangest ways. The whole thing sends out a magnetic field and it pushes and it pulls and attracts or it pushes away. In the strangest ways, oh, yeah. In the strangest ways, yeah. And the field can just disappear as the atoms get a realized shape. Then all you've got is a hunk of iron getting back is a piece of cake. When the atoms start to get in line, they can make a piece of iron start to act in the strangest way. In the strangest ways, yeah. The strangest ways. Okay, very nice. Jury, could you please go deliberate now? I've heard that the jury has reached a verdict. Let's get back to the trial to hear what it is. 
Jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. We, the jury, find the defendant, Sparky Not Quite, not guilty. Thank you. Science court is adjourned. Not guilty? Yeah, too bad. Oh, well, I gotta go talk to Judge Stone. I'll see ya. Uh, excuse me, Judge Stone? Yes, Mr. Savage, what is it? It's for you. Today's your birthday, right? How did you know it was my birthday? I never told anyone. Well, I have some friends in high places. Open it up. Oh, this is a great one. I love it. Thank you very much, Mr. Savage. Oh, you're welcome. So, uh, how old are you? Please don't ruin a nice moment. Ah, how sweet. Well, that's all from the Science Court Courthouse. I hope you'll stop by the lab for another fun and intriguing investigation about magnets. I'll look for you there. We're so glad you could join us in the lab for our exciting investigation about magnets. I hope you'll join us soon for another Science Court exploration. And until next time, remember, science is the law and scientific thinking rules. Oh, poor baby.